right, guys, let's start. Um, if you want to take a seat, here are three seats in, in case uh, uh, that you want to take a seat. All right, the next guest, I never uh, remember uh, before Jos in Italy. Honestly, I don't remember. Maybe he was for an event. When, when was he in Italy? I, I don't think he, he never spoke uh, in, a, in this kind of event. And uh, in the biography of Jos Ivardi is uh, something like the godfather of the startup world. Do you remember ICQ? Yeah, ICQ. So uh, ICQ is from Yossi and so many startups, so many investments. Uh, really, he's like, uh, when, when he uh, speak, I, I'm always like uh, ready on my knees. And uh, definitely you have to wait for uh, also, you know, a lot of jokes because in his bio is also prankster. <laughs> so this is always very funny. How many uh, of you doesn't speak Italian? Okay, I have to say something for the Italian people because I don't want Yossi to listen to me. Okay. Gli facciamo una standing ovation quando entra. Lui non se l'aspetta, entrerà, capito, con i suoi scherzi. Gli facciamo una standing ovation quando entra. Okay? Okay. All right. <coughs> Guys, Yossi Vardi! Thanks, Ross, for being here. I really appreciate it. How about that? Okay, okay. Thank you very much for this uh, wonderful uh, reception. You know, this slot in conferences just after the lunch is called by us, the guys who are speaking in a lot of conferences, the graveyard slot, because usually everybody fall asleep. So I, when I was assigned the slot, I was worried, and our master of ceremony told me, don't you worry, the audience will be very alive. And he delivered the promise, so thank you very much. <laughs> Few weeks ago, when I gave a talk at this time, it was three o'clock in the afternoon, hot summer day, a guy on the first row, on the first row fell asleep. So I asked the guy next to him, can you please wake him, wake him up? So he looked at me and he said, you made him sleep, you wake him up. <laughs> okay, also, I was concerned about your ability to understand my English, and I say that I will judge it by the laughter. I don't know if he instructed you that when you hear your neighbor laugh, you should laugh also in order to encourage me, but I see that this work also. So thank you very much. Thank you, Luca, for putting to, together this wonderful uh, uh, conference. And thank you, Mike. Mike, don't look so English. Express a little bit of enthusiasm. <laughs> Mike Butcher, as you know, is uh, the partner of Luca in putting the conference. Thank you, Mrs. Chairman of the museum. It's very nice uh, structure. I try to explain to my wife what's going on here, but I don't think that the human vocabulary have the, the words in order to describe the experience. You have to, walk, to come here in order to see it, but it's really an amazing place. And what is more amazing, that an institute which is devoted to art uh, open its arm and embrace this community of entrepreneurs. This is really very nice. I think she is entitled to round, another round of applause. I, when I prepared this talk, I deliberated between sharing with you the Israeli experience. As you probably read, uh, we have a very active uh, community of entrepreneurs, etc. Or to share with you some of my experience from uh, my involvement in startups, what kind of do and don't do, and I was advised by my friend speaker that maybe I should go for the second one, sharing with you some of uh, my experience. Nevertheless, uh, regarding the Israeli experience, I want to share with you one thing. What is the difference between the Israeli mother and the Italian mother? Because somebody told me it's very similar communities. I said, no, there is a distinct difference. Italian mother tell her son, you finish everything 
from the plate or I will kill you. Israeli mother tell her son, you finish everything from the plate or, or I will kill myself. And uh, <laughs> believe me, the second one is much more effective. <laughs> so this is one of uh, many, many differences. We will talk about it maybe some other, other time. Now to, to the issue of building building successful startup. First of all, let me try to seize the audience. Who in the audience is entrepreneur? Who is involved in a company which has less than 25 people? Who is involved in a company 25 to 200 people? Who is involved 200, over 200? Who is not involved at all is retired. retired. <laughs> Okay, uh, first of all, I would like to suggest to anybody who built startup to go to a very interesting site, which is not mine, called Startup Genome. It's a, start, it's a, it's a site which is made by three young American people in California. I think one student of Berkeley and two of Stanford, or two of Berkeley and one in Stanford. They made statistics of some thousands of companies and try to see what are the common denominator. Let me start with the following question. Ra raising funds for the startup. Should you raise large amounts or should you raise small amounts? Sorry? Anybody would like to suggest what is better, to raise large amount or to raise small amount? I'm sorry? Depends. Okay, can you elaborate? Depends is a good answer because you cannot be wrong. <laughs> Pardon? Okay, what they show that raising too much money in the first stage can be toxic. And the reason if you raise a lot of money in the beginning, your tendency is to spend the money. You begin to spend the money, you create a very big burning rate. And you create burning rate, you cannot come into, uh, into balance, you cannot have enough revenues fast enough, and then you are you're having deficit, and you have to go and do another round and another round. So companies which start their lives with raising too much money usually will, uh, will not... Uh, will not be able to sustain. What you have to do is in the beginning to raise smaller amount of money to do the proof of concept, to build the product, and only when you see that you begin to have revenues and you have some kind of assurance that you will be able to have enough revenues, you can go and raise more money in order to accelerate, to accelerate the, the development. Theoretically, you can raise a lot of money and put it in the bank and spend it very little, but this is against human, uh, human nature. So this is their conclusion. What is the number of entrepreneurs which should team together in order to create a startup? One, two, three, four, ten. Any suggestions? Guys, you are too, too passive. Help me. Three. Who thinks that one entrepreneur is the best, the best uh, choice you think? Two, three, four. Okay, so the wisdom of the crowd uh, work at this time. Uh, three partners usually is the, op the, optimal, the optimal number, or at least statistics show that with, that with three partners you have the highest probability to succeed. And the reason is that you need, in order to get a good uh, core, core company, core startup, you need a number of disciplines. You need a guy who knows the technology, you need a guy who understands the product and the market, and you need a guy who understands uh, fi finance, because uh, usually, other than me and Lucas, nobody has all the talents uh, 
in one uh, person, and sometimes I worry about Luca. <laughs> so, so three, three partners. Let's talk a little bit about pivoting. You are familiar with the term pivoting? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about pivoting. Pivoting is a clean word to describe a situation that after four months or half a year, you see that you don't go anywhere and you cannot go to your uh, investors and tell them that you don't have a clue because this doesn't sound well. So you go and tell them that you are doing pivoting, which means that you turn around the direction of the company, which practically means you start all over again. Whatever you wasted, you wasted. And uh, the question I'm going to pose to you, pivoting. What is the optimal number of pivoting of a startup? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Three. Who say three? <laughs> Other suggestions? One. Guys. Make a guess. I'm not going to kill you if you are wrong. I even don't know your names. <laughs> two. two. You say two. You should stop running museums and become an uh, <laughs> entrepreneur. No, no, but this is a startup. This is a startup. And how many people think uh, pivots it had? We already had one. One. Okay, the optimal numbers of pivot is between one and two. If you don't do any pivoting, it means that you don't learn anything. If you do, if you are zigzagging too much, you will spend too much money. So the statistics showed that successful companies had between one and two pivoting. The nice thing about internet, that internet, from a technical point of view, it's very forgiving. You know, it's not like building a building that uh, you look in the building and then you say, well, uh, it's not, I don't like it, and you, you cannot go and, uh, and collapse it. You know how you do pivoting on buildings? You grow in them uh, ivy to, to cover what, uh, what has been done. Uh, in the internet, it's very flexible. You have to go and change the code, which is not very pleasant, but it's not a, a tragedy, and you start uh, all over again. Mr. Tiscali. How many people think you had when you created your wonderful company? One. One? One. Two hundred. Two hundred. Okay, you have to tell us you are speaking at three o'clock. You will tell us how you survived. <laughs> but uh, we have a saying that the, the product is smarter than the creator of the product. You have to listen very very well to the, to the market and to integrate what the market wants uh, into the product. It will be usually very difficult to educate the markets. Let's talk one word about business plan. Who in the audience wrote business plan ever? Raise your hand. Hi, I want it really high. Now I'm asking a question. Put your, I saw that you, no, no, keep the, your second end. I need your second end. Keep your, okay, keep your hand, don't get it down. From those who have the hand right, who believe in what he wrote in the business plan? <laughs> Raise the second end. Very few hands. Okay, business plan, business plan are very, are very strange, uh, very strange creatures. I personally, uh, I invested in, uh, in the last 16 years, I invest, invested in over 80 startups. I saw uh, many companies. I don't read business plan. I don't read business plans because I find them very insulting. When somebody give me a business plan, I think this guy think I'm a total idiot who will believe of what is written <laughs> in the business plan. I think that business plans are, a business plan belong to the genre of science fiction, a special sub, sub, uh, sub genre which I call numerical science fiction. This is 
business plan the right, the way to create a convincing business plan is based on somebody, something which is called financial reverse, re reverse financial creative engineering. You start with the result and you walk backwards to the data. And then you calculate the data and then you put the data in the Excel and you create a business plan which quite amazing get exactly to the result which you, you want. Creative reverse financial engineering. And, uh, and the only people, the common thing to business plan and sausages is that only people who don't know how they are being made are willing to eat them. <laughs> I read, I read uh, two weeks ago a statement of a lady nutritionist. She said, again, I hope I'm not offend, 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 offending anybody. She said she wouldn't give a sausage even to her dog. And I say I wouldn't give a business plan even to a dog. So <laughs> the problem that you need to create this document because I think it's some kind of a religious ritual, which uh, modern religious ritual that without business plan, uh, it's very hard to talk to the VCs. But you have to take it with a lot of grains of salt. Uh, one word about demos. I said it already many times. Uh, I don't allow entrepreneurs to come to me with laptop. And the reason that I don't allow them, entrepreneurs have one very important thing, and this is enthusiasm. You get an entrepreneur, he come to your home. Usually, my, my desk is very cluttered. I have tons of things on... Uh, my desk, and then this young guy opened the laptop and put it on the top of everything, and I immediately kind of shrink from fear that everything is going to be spread on the floor, which happened very often. And then uh, the guy spent his dreams, his aspirations, his hopes, his plans, uh, everything, you know, on this small program which has 275 different features and he, I know he wouldn't leave my home until he forced me to see each one <laughs> of the 275 features and if at feature 173 I don't understand exactly what he's talking about he will go to feature number one <laughs> and with a lot of patience it will take me through the list and then when he end the demonstration, he look at me with this look, which means, well, and now I have two options. You know, either I tell him, look, it's, it's, I, I, I didn't understand what you, what you are talking, you know. I, I, am not, I am not a digital native. I'm a digital immigrant. I came to all this space without exactly took me 10 years to realize that there is a right button to the, to the mouse that you can use it, you know, for, for 10 years I used only the left button. Then my son told me there is a right button also, which you may want to, <laughs> to use. So how can I understand all these fantastic features? Or, so if I, if I show lack of interest, he will say, in the best case, that I'm an idiot. In a less good case, he will say that I'm conceited. And in the worst case, he will say that not only I'm an idiot, but also conceited. And this is not good. So I have to fake uh, enthusiasm, you know, artificial enthusiasm, no, known also as faking orgasm. But after doing it for 3,000 times, you know, there is a limit. How how many times you can fake. So my, my answer is don't bring the laptop, don't bring the demo, and my suggestion to entrepreneurs when you go and try to raise funds, try to develop some personal rapport 
with the guy. The guy so many features. Try to explain to him why you are, what makes you unique, what makes you special. I met, uh, I met uh, at, the, at the lobby of this conference. I was approached by a young lady who has some product of marketing. I don't, maybe she's in the audience. If she, if she is, she knows that she approached me. She told me about the product and I really, it's got for me from one, one ear to the, to the other ear. But what impressed me, I'm serious, I'm telling you so you know how the investor thinks. She said, hey, you know, we are three ladies and we are a team of three ladies and we are very enthusiastic and we are going to conquer the world. And I know when I hear this kind of talk, which is genuine, that at least you are dealing with somebody who is, who is very motivated. And between having the, you are laughing, it was not you. No, okay, are you, are the lady who came to me, are you in the audience? Raise your hand, stand up. <laughs> stand up, can you, can you repeat the pitch you gave me, like which took you 30 seconds? <laughs> Try to do it again. Okay. Okay. This. This is the sign that uh, I have to leave the stage because he told me either I leave nicely or he will use moderate force. Can, can we, can we so. say last time at Le Web, the organizer of Le Web said, Marco, uh, I don't want to go to stop Yossi, you go. And so I enter very slowly because I didn't want to interrupt Yossi. And then I say, sorry, Yossi, it's only 30 seconds left. So he looked at me and say, all right, then 30. 29, 20. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yossi See Bardi. you next year in Tech Thank you so much.